Hi, in my hands I have Seed Studio Xiao ESP 32C3 and the last two characters make a significant difference because this is a RISC-V development board. For your convenience, this video is divided into chapters. We're going to do an unboxing and getting started with Arduino IDE. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's start with a quick unboxing. Here I have three brand new Xiao ESP32C3 modules. Each of them is packaged in a plastic bag. I'm opening one of them. Inside we have the module and an antenna. Seed Studio Xiao ESP32C3 is an IoT mini development board based on the Espressive ESP32C3 Wi-Fi Bluetooth dual mode chip. This is a very powerful 32-bit RISC-V microcontroller which includes a floating point unit for 32-bit single precision arithmetics. The Xiao form factor offers 11 GPI opens, also ground, 5 volts and 3.3 volts. This development board offers many different interfaces. There is I2C, SPI, I2S, two UARTs, pulse width modulation on the GPIOs. Four of the GPIOs can be actually used as analog to digital converters. On the back of Seed Studios Xiao ESP32C3, there are JTAG pads, a thermal pad, and battery connectors if you would like to do a wearable device powered on batteries. On the front of the board, we have a USB-C connector and two buttons, one for boot and one for reset. Between the two buttons, there is a connector for an external antenna to increase the radio range. Thanks to the Espressive microcontroller, it is possible to use this development board in the so-called deep sleep mode when the power consumption is ultra low. It's about 43 microamperes. Xiao ESP32C3 is available for 499 US dollars. You can order it from the website of Seed Studio. Seed Studio's Xiao ESP32C3 comes with 400 kilobytes of SRAM and 4 megabytes of onboard flash memory. This development board offers both Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Wi Fi is compatible with BG and N protocol versions. Bluetooth Low Energy subsystem is provided, which supports features for Bluetooth 5 and Bluetooth Mesh. An external antenna is provided to extend the range for the radio communication. I'm connecting the antenna to the dedicated connector on the front of the module. One more thing. All of the components are placed on the front side of this development board. There are castellated holes which allow surface mount technology for using this module on top of printed circuit boards that you have designed. This is really convenient for embedding this module in your Internet of Things. This Xiao module is with Espressive ESP32C3 microcontroller, which is based on the RISC-V architecture. What's so special about RISC-V? Well, it is an open instruction set architecture based on the RISC principles, the other actually most popular on the market as of the moment architecture based on RISC is ARM. But unlike ARM, RISC-V has this advantage that is open source and there are no fees or royalties to use it. It is becoming more and more popular and it is a great thing for open source enthusiasts like me. All Xiao modules, including this ESP32C3 module, are with thumb size, which is 21 by 70.5 mm overall dimension. This is very portable and lightweight, suitable for even wearable devices. The size of the antenna is 4 cm by 2 cm. Please note the antenna is provided for supporting Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection over 100 meters. In other cases where you need shorter range, for example for indoor use, you may not attach the antenna. In a nutshell, Xiao ESP32C3 is very small and compact. Actually, the antenna is bigger than the model itself. 
As you have probably noticed during the unboxing, Xiao ESP32 C3 comes without any headers, so I need to solder them. I need these male header pins in order to use the module on a breadboard, for example in the next chapter. I'm using my favorite soldering iron and Anavi fume extractor to keep the dangerous fumes out of my face. Obviously the soldering requires some tools and skills, but actually it takes just a few minutes or even less. Espressive is the leader on the Internet of Things market because of their microcontrollers with Wi-Fi capabilities, such as ESP8266 and ESP32. They have an enormous ecosystem featuring various programming languages, uh, frameworks and editors. For ESP32 C3 we'll be using Arduino IDE, but actually there are plenty of other options. So let's get started and make a simple blinking application using Arduino IDE and Arduino Sketch. Actually, before we proceed with Arduino IDE, I need to do a little bit of a wiring of the module on a breadboard. So here I have Xiao ESP32 C3 and an LED attached to it. The LED is attached to GPIO D10 with a current limiting resistor. Using a USB to USB-C cable, I'm connecting the module to my personal computer. Several steps have to be performed in Arduino IDE. By the way, it works on Microsoft Windows, uh, Mac OS and Linux. I'm using it on Ubuntu Linux distribution. Obviously, the first step is to install the free Arduino IDE and the second step is to launch it. After that, step number three is to add the ESP32 board package to it. Navigate to File, Preferences and fill additional Boards Manager URL with the URL which is available in the description of the video. After that, go to Tools, select Board and click on Board Manager. Type the keyword ESP32 in the search box and select the latest version of ESP32 package. After that, hit the Install button. Arduino IDE will download and install the required files. Depending on your internet connection speed, it may take a while. The next step is to write a simple Arduino sketch for the blinking LED. A link to the source code is available in the description of the video, so you can just do copy and paste. The final step is to compile the sketch and upload it to the development board. From the Tools menu in Arduino IDE, select the correct port to which the board has been connected to your computer. After that, from the left upper corner, click the Upload button. Arduino IDE will take care to first compile the Arduino sketch and then to upload it to Xiao ESP32 C3. That's all folks, now we have our simple application for blinking LED uploaded to the development board and it's time for a demo. Let's enjoy the beauty of the blinking LED. In the universe of embedded developers, this is just like a Hello World application. I have attached a green LED to Xiao ESP32 C3. The Arduino sketch switches between on and off of the LED on every second. That's how we have the blinking effect. This is the last chapter of the video. It's time to talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of Seed Studio Xiao ESP32 C3. Let's start with the advantages. Advantage number one is the RISC-V architecture used by the microcontroller. ESP32 C3 is based on RISC-V, which is an open instruction set architecture. The second advantage of this module is the USB-C port. USB-C is something that's widely used nowadays and it's the better connector in terms of USB and embedded devices. The third advantage of this module is the small size. It fits pretty much anywhere. Another advantage for advanced users are the crystallization holes which allows you to uh, use surface mount technology for assembling this module on top of your printed circuit boards. 
Are there any disadvantages of Shell ESP32 C3? Actually, there is only one that comes to my mind, and this is the fact that it has significantly less GPIO pins compared to what the ESP32 C3 microcontroller by Espressive offers. And this is the trade-off because of the super small and convenient size of the Xiao board. I hope you've liked this video. I definitely recommend you trying out the development board by C Studio called Xiao ESP32 C3. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned for new videos.